Hey guys, this is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. Today we will be talking about panoramic imaging, so stay tuned. So this video is on panoramic imaging. So the panoramic imaging or pentomography is a body section imaging. It is a body section imaging technique for producing a single image of the facial structures that includes both the maxillary and the mandibular dental arches and their supporting structures as well. So this is achieved by using a single rotation of the x-ray source and an image receptor around the patient's head. So we rotate the x-ray source as well as the image receptor around the patient's head and this creates a curved focal trough that is a zone in which included objects are displayed clearly whereas the objects that are in front or behind this are blurred and magnified to a degree that they are not being able to see that we are not able to see those objects clearly. So this we will discuss in the later parts of the video. So now let's come to the principle for the panoramic image formation. This was first described by Patero and Numata independently in 1948 and 1933. So now let's see the formation of the focal trough in panoramic machine. So suppose we have to take the x-ray of this object A. Okay. So what we'll do is simply we'll shoot the x-ray and the beam will pass through this object A and we will get the image on the receptor for this object A. So we will get the image of A. So this is what happens when we take the x-ray of a single object. But in panoramic imaging we need to take the x-ray of multiple objects that is we have to make the beam pass through multiple objects in order to receive a single wide image. right? So now we have to take the x-ray of A, B and C. So how can we do this? How can we get that image? Because if it's for single object A, we will simply shoot the x-ray and get the image on the receptor. But for A, B and C, we will have to move this disc. That is, we will have to rotate this disc in order to make the beam pass through all the three objects. So in that way, the disc will move and this is how here it will be B then we will get the image of B as well then as the disc moves we will get image of C as well so this is how we can get the image but now the problem is that the receptor is stationary and all the images will be formed on a single point of the receptor. So the images of all the objects will be overlapped on each other. So in order to get a clear wide image of all the objects, what we will have to do is we will also have to move this receptor. So for this reason we will have to move our receptor as well. And in the same direction as that of the disc and at the same rate as the beam passes through the objects A, B and C. So now as our receptor moves, so we will get the images on separate points on the receptor. So we will get the images of A at a different point, B on a different point and C on a separate point on the receptor and this is how we will be able to get the magnified images of all the objects on the receptor and because this source receptor distance is constant and the object receptor distance is also same for each object all the objects are equally magnified. So this is how we will get the images for A, B and C clearly on the receptor. But what about the objects D, E and F? They are also passing through the X-ray source but are on the opposite side of the disc that is between the X-ray source and the center of rotation. So there, as they are on the opposite side of that from that of the receptor, so their images will be reversed as they are moving in a reverse direction. So their images or the shadows will be reversed and will be magnified and are not clear. 
So this is the basic concept of panoramic imaging. We saw that the disc moves and as the disc moves we are able to make the x-ray beam pass through multiple objects and we are able to get the images of multiple objects on a single wide image. But in the case we have to take the x-ray of the patient we cannot ask the patient to move right. So what we will do in that case is we will have to move the x-ray source. So now we will have to move the x-ray source as the patient cannot move. So to get the image we can move the x-ray source so that the x-ray is passing through the objects A, B and C. And to receive the image on the receptor we obviously need to move this image receptor. So the x-ray source, the receptor and the collimator rotates around the disc. Here you can see that how the receptor moves past the collimator during their motion around the disc. So the collimator also moves. So there is rotation of the x-ray source, the receptor and also of the collimator. So instead of the disc, now you can imagine the mandible. So same way like in the previous example, x-ray source and the receptor moves around the object and produces the images of point A, B and C. And D, E and F will also be present but their images will be magnified and will not be clear as we have discussed earlier. The contemporary panoramic machines use a continuously moving center of rotation rather than a single fixed center of rotation. So usually the center of rotation is continuously moving along with the x-ray source. This feature optimizes the shape of the focal trough to best reveal the teeth and the supporting bone. So as the x-ray source moves behind the patient, the center of rotation moves forward along the arc as we can see in the dotted lines and the image shows direction of the x-ray beam at various intervals for the first half of the exposure cycle. The x-ray source continues to move around the patient on the opposite side. During this the arc is reversed and the other part of the jaw will be imaged similarly. So as the x-ray passes along these areas we will be able to see an image layer. This image layer is called the focal trough. So the area through which the x-ray is passing and we get the clear image is the focal trough or the image layer. So focal trough is a three dimensional curved zone or image layer where the structures lying within the zone are reasonably well defined on the image. So the closer anatomical structure is positioned to the center of the trough more clearly its image is seen on the radiograph. So the objects within the focal trough forms sharp and clear images whereas the objects outside the focal trough are blurred, magnified or reduced in size and even distorted sometimes to the extent of not being recognizable. In a panoramic radiograph three different types of images may cast depending on the location of the anatomical structures. These can be real images double images or ghost images. So first let's see the real images. The objects that lie between the center of rotation and the receptor forms real image. Within this the object that lie within the focal trough cast relatively sharp images whereas the images of the objects located outside the focal trough are blurred. Like for example over here the images that are within the focal trough that is our mandible will cast a sharp image. So this portion of the mandible will cast a sharp image whereas even the hyoid bone and the cervical spine are also located within the center of rotation and the receptor. So their images will also be formed on the receptor but as they are not inside the focal trough so their images will not be cleared and will be magnified and will be blurred. So the only sharp image that we get, the clear image that we get at this point of time is that of the mandible because first it is located between the center of rotation and the receptor and second it is within the focal trough. So this portion of the mandible will cast sharp image at this particular point. Okay, whereas the hyoid bone and the cervical spine are also located within the center of rotation and the receptor 
but because they are not included in the focal draft so their images will be present but will not be clear and will be magnified or distorted now let's see the double images the objects that lie posterior to the center of rotation and are intercepted twice by the x ray beam forms the double layer for example the hyoid bone the epiglottis cervical spine all of which cast the double layer because they are intercepted twice by the x ray beam so now the ghost images the objects located between the x ray source and the center of rotation will cast ghost images on the panoramic image so the ghost images will be seen on the opposite side of its true anatomical location and at a higher level why are they located at a higher level it is because of the upward inclination of the x ray beam that is it goes from downwards to upwards so the you can see that the image of the left body and the ramus are present on the opposite side that is the right side and are magnified and blurred why it's magnified and blurred because the objects are outside the focal plane and close to the x ray source so they are blurred and magnified the ramus is superimposed on the opposite side of the image as well as the hyoid and the cervical spine also forms the ghost images when the anterior regions of the jaws are imaged additionally metallic accessories such as earrings necklaces and hairpins we ask the patient to remove before we do the opg but if the patient does not remove these accessories these also forms the ghost images and appears as blurred radio opaque images that can obscure the anatomical details and mask any pathological changes now what are the indications for panoramic imaging it is indicated for overall evaluation of the dentition to examine for any interosseous pathology such as cysts tumors or infections for gross evaluation of the tmj for evaluation of the position of the impacted teeth and the eruption of the permanent dentition then in the cases of trauma and developmental disturbances of maxillofacial skeleton now what are the advantages of opg compared with the full mouth examination the, it it covers a broad area that is it has a broad coverage of facial bones and teeth low radiation dose ease of panoramic radiograph techniques and can be used in patients with trismus or in patients who cannot tolerate intraoral radiography because of their gag reflex and it is a quick and convenient radiographic technique both for the patient as well as the clinician now what are the disadvantages there is lower resolution of the images that do not provide the fine details provided by the intraoral radiographs and the magnification across images is unequal making linear measurements unreliable and also superimposition of real double and ghost images and requires careful visualization to decipher anatomical and pathological details and difficult to image both the jaws when the patient has severe maxillofacial discrepancies so that is all about panoramic imaging if you have any further query or questions or you want me to cover any other topic you can contact me on my instagram page or comment down below i hope you like this video and if you do please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and also share it with your friends to make their life easier as well and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos and any kind of feedback is highly appreciated see you until next time thank you